Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Hope you guys all had a great week. And welcome back to another episode of FMF on the Past is Alive. I appreciate you guys all for being here. We have a decent amount of packages to rip through tonight, but nothing crazy, so I won't hold you guys up too long. But I'm going to start out with some stuff I picked up online. I had these sitting around for the last couple of days waiting to rip them open with you guys first. So I'm going to slash into these first. What is going on, Austin and everybody else? Hope you're having a good night. This first one was a recent eBay buy. It was a super good deal. I could not pass on this one at all. Literally picked it up for half of what they usually go for. Hey, Adam Y, Baltimore Box Breakers. Got a package from you. Thank you for being here. This is something I've had my eye on for probably the last five years. And finally saw it get listed for a very good price. Couldn't pass on it. Let's see if I can unravel it here. I'm sure you can already see that it is real Ghostbusters. You know how I love my real Ghostbusters stuff. Special, especially novelty stuff. Like this is a lot smaller than I thought it was gonna be, but this is pretty sick. It is a real Ghostbusters floating soap dish, still sealed, the original packaging from the late 80s. And these usually go for about 100 bucks, 90 to 100 bucks, somewhere in that uh, range. I picked it up for 45. So I've had my eye on this for quite a while. It's pretty sick. It has the Ecto one to float around the soap to float around in it. So pretty awesome. Never had this one as a kid, but uh, like I said, wanted this for the last five years. Finally found it for 45 bucks, half the price of what they usually sell for. So had to scoop that one up. But uh, pretty stoked. That will go in the RGB collection on display. And this next one is something I thought was absolutely hilarious. I've seen this one time. These were limited to 30, and it's not really uh, appropriate, but I'm going to show it anyways. <laughs> so, if you're easily offended, then uh, please look away for the next two minutes. This is pretty sick, though. Smaller than I thought, but... Um, this is a custom figure um, from a company in Germany called Goodleg, and they only produced 30 of these. I want to say these came out about two or three years ago they made these. Uh, just a generic blank back on the card here, but I thought this was absolutely hilarious. I remember seeing these a couple years ago, and uh, the same exact style as the original Real Ghostbusters toy line, except it's Turd Busters, and just the artwork on here is absolutely hilarious. You see his, uh, his name there. I'm not going to say it. Um... With uh, the, the uh, butt wipe ghost there, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna curse on here and uh, have YouTube demonetize me. But uh, pretty hilarious figure though overall. Custom plunger, the neutrino wand, and the proton pack, and there is the toilet paper ghost. <laughs> but I had to pick that up, so <laughs> it's uh, such a ridiculous figure. I needed that in my PC, so. Props to good leg over in Germany, but uh, like I said, this is 20 out of 30. They only produce 30 of these, so they are pretty rare for custom, but uh, <laughs> pretty pretty hilarious. Love that uh, that card artwork on there. <laughs> so good. Hey, Patreon part. Thanks for uh, tuning in, and Chad, and everybody else. So that's it. That's all I picked up over the last like week. Um, now I'm going to dive into stuff that you sent in. And I missed a super chat from Austin Farm for two bucks that says entertaining stuff on the police radio tonight. Thank you so much, Austin Farmer. What kind of stuff is going on out by you tonight on the scanner there? Hopefully nothing too crazy. The next one is one that I, uh, it's one that I missed last week. I overlooked it and I apologize for that, but it's from Burrow Jr., just kind of fell to the side of the mail cart there. Or should I say the Hills shopping cart is what I keep all my uh, FMF stuff in when I get it. Gradually throughout the week, I put it in the Hills shopping cart, which isn't uh, isn't too inviting to people that uh, aren't nostalgic like I am. They walk in my house right away and see a Hills shopping cart. <laughs> kind of makes me look like a hoarder, I guess. Austin says, drunkards causing a ruckus, running into cars and carrying six packs of beer around and disturbing their neighbors. Sounds like a big frat boy fest. Well, stay safe, man. 
We have a note in here. I don't recognize the name. Make sure there's not an address on here. There's not. Let's go ahead and read it. It says, hey, John, first off, just wanted to let you know how much I enjoy your show. I'm a huge New York Mets, Dallas Cowboys, and pro wrestling fan. I'm 44 years old, and your show brings back a lot of childhood memories. Second, I'm going through some difficult times, so I'm sorry I can't support your effort through Patreon. I plan to do so once things improve. In the meantime, I always give your YouTube videos a thumbs up and send your videos to my friends so they can also subscribe. Well, thanks so much, man. I really appreciate that. You don't need to be a Patreon patron to support the channel. I appreciate you just watching and thumbs up in the videos, man. I'm glad you get something out of it. And then he goes on to say, Third, I know you've been looking for the Jeff Kent card, so I feel it will find a better home with your PC than mine. I don't want anything in return. However possible, could you please reserve a spot for me if you choose to do a 91 Top Desert Shield break? That's something I was trying to do desperately, and um, I was just getting bad vibes from the, the from the seller. It was a guy on an app called uh, Mercari. It's just a very very shitty transaction overall, and it was just kind of uh, kind of got noted out by it. So I think he ended up selling it to somebody else. I, I really just kind of felt like the cards might have been counterfeit. So I kind of held off on it. So I'm not sure if it'll happen or not. I'd love to do it someday though. So hopefully we will eventually. But uh, those boxes are hard to come across for, you know, that kind of a price. Anyways, I have obviously will pay you for the break. I just want a chance in case you decide to do the break. My father is a Desert Shield veteran. He brought home two packs when we returned stateside. They remained in the attic for years. Unfortunately, years later, we found out that a bunch of mice chewed them up and used them along with a cardboard box for a nest. Oh, that sucks, man. If there wasn't, like, a Chipper Jones in there. Sifting through the remains, it was obvious there was a Gary Carter and Ken Griffey Jr. in those packs. Jeez. The Griffey's like a $150, $200 card, not slab. So that that is that is tough. It says, Ugh. However, if you don't decide to do the break, I hope you appreciate and enjoy the card. Please keep the awesome work and up the awesome work, and I would look forward to your future videos. Thank you, Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow Jr. at gmail.com. And before I this, I'm going to check out uh, the Super Chat. I think I missed a couple here. I'm sorry. I apologize. And ripping for Ripkins, our buddy over there on on his new channel, for the five dollar super shots says, "Can't wait to see you complete that turd buster set." <laughs> Thanks a lot, ripping for Ripkins. I really appreciate that. He actually just came became uh, the num the number one patron today. Um, I really appreciate your support, man. And please check him out. He actually put two videos out today. One is a mail video, and the other one is a double box break. So please. Check out Ripping for Ripkins. Click on that super chat. Give him a sub. Help him grow his channel. I think he's around 50 right now. And there is the Jeff Kent 92 score traded. I really appreciate that, Joe Burrow Jr. This is a card that eluded me for a long time. Somebody actually sent it to me last week. Um, it was an, an, an unmarked envelope, so I have no idea who sent it last week. But now I have two of the Jeff Kent. I really appreciate uh, you looking out for me, man, and sending me this card. So now I have two, had zero for the longest time. But uh, I like that card a lot, obviously, because I've never come across it. It's actually kind of a rare card, believe it or not. I never even see the 92 score traded set. So I really appreciate that, Joe Burrow Jr. Thank you very much, man. And I appreciate the kind words as well. I'm glad that uh, my videos bring back a lot of memories for you. Very, very awesome to hear that. I love hearing that. And a, a buck from Baltimore Box Breakers with a turd emoji. <laughs> Thank you, Baltimore Box Breakers. I got a package from you as well tonight. We're going to rip into. Please check Baltimore Box Breakers out as well. He just posted a video yesterday. Um, pack of Palooza number six. It's a series he does over there and rips a bunch of old packs, older than newer packs. So it's definitely interesting to watch what he pulls. I feel like he usually always has good pulls. We'll save these for later on. The first one we're going to open here is. From Jennifer and Scott Zimmerman. You guys may recognize her. Where's my shooter card here? But she actually has a channel as well. Getting close to 100 subs, Jennifer. So congrats on that. She's been a friend of the channel for quite a while. So I appreciate your support. Thank you guys all for subbing to each other. Very cool to hear that. Helping grow your channels. And there's two bucks from Austin Pharmacies. Let's get Chet Lemon to change his name to, <laughs> to Chet the Dead. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Austin Farmer. I'm all for it. 
I haven't seen, is Chet Lemon in here? I feel like I haven't seen him in a while. Chet Lemon is another YouTuber. Well, he doesn't make videos, but usually in the live streams, for any guys that are wondering who Chet Lemon is, also was a baseball player long, long ago. I see a bunch of singles in here from Jennifer and Scott. There's a note, so we'll check that out too. I see a Barry Larkin on top. And throw that aside. Make sure there is no address. And it says, hey, John, just a few cards, old and vintage, do as you please. No need to send anything back. Till next time, Scott and Jen. Well, thank you very much, Scott and Jen. I appreciate that. I actually just sent a package your way today of some stuff I think you'll like. I know you like the oddball stuff, so uh, right up your alley, actually. This is Chipper Jones. It's actually a third year card, 90, or 93 Don Ross, very rookie card. It's in uh, Series 2. I never saw that one whenever I was younger. But very nice one there, Hall of Famer Chipper Jones. And a Yogi Berra 73 Tops Manager card. Very, very cool. I want to say we auctioned this one off uh, like two weeks ago. So I didn't have my PC anymore, and now I do again. So thank you very much for that, Jennifer. It's a nice card, too, and overall in decent shape for early 70s. And there's a Benito Santiago. That was a hot card back in the uh, mid to late 80s. 86 Fleer. And that's also in good shape. Thank you very much for that. I collect rookies, so... Not sure if I had the Benito Santiago rookie or not. And we have some vintage in here now. Very nice. There's one I've never seen before. The winners celebrate. 66 World Series records on the back. Pacarola's next. Some nice cards in here. And these are in pretty good shape, too. For being uh, 67 tops. Dave Moorhead. Ed Brinkman. These are definitely uh, well taken care of, Jennifer. Very nice. Willie Horton, Sporting News, one of those cards. John Roseboro, 69 tops. John Donaldson. Let's say I just, was that card in the $20 box we just uh, went through recently? Maybe it was a different Met. Looks familiar though. Bud Harrelson, 73 tops. And a 68 Ron Hunt. Love the 68 design. Very, very nice. Thank you so much, Jennifer. These are awesome cards. I don't have many 67 Tops cards at all, believe it or not. I only have, actually have a handful of them, so really appreciate uh, that addition to my collection. So I'm trying to cop on the chat here. There's a Larkin 92 Tops. So some Hall of Famers here. Eckersley, there's a nice one. Manny Ramirez. I love these 92 score draft pick cards. For some reason, I just love them. I remember... Uh, Pulling some of those out of, out of packs when I was younger. Those, these were the chase cards that I looked for when I bought packs of those. And I used to buy a ton of packs, 92 score. And uh, Aaron Seeley rookie card was in there. Cliff Floyd. Seeley was a big one back then, too. He was one of my favorite players. Um, or probably my favorite player, actually, in like 92, 93. So set definitely has special meaning to me. Brian Williams, 92 upper deck. And another Manny Ramirez rookie card, 92 upper deck. Always loved that card. Always was a Manny fan. Rod Beck. Kenny Lofton, that's actually his second year card. It's a Chan Ho Park rookie card. That's a nice one. I don't know if I had that one or not. 94 Fleer Ultra. Michael Tucker, 93 score. 96 score. Kyle Abbott, Jim Abbott's brother. Javi Lopez, that's actually a third year card, 93 upper deck. That was definitely a hot card back in the 90s too. And I see a Javi Lopez, 92 Bowman behind it. Second year. Love 92 Bowman said. I would love the roof box of those someday. Fortunately, they're like 400 bucks for a box, and kind of discouraged from doing it because Eric's. I know Eric went to box those like last year, and it wasn't that great. So, another really hot card back in '93, JT Snow. Big prospect. Same thing with Klesko. That's actually his second year card, '92 upper deck. Greg Swindell. <laughs> Gotta have the Swindell cards in there. And there's Chris Sabo, 90 Don Russ. <laughs> Can't escape him. Very, very nice. And some more vintage. And there's 10 bucks from our buddy 357 Mag. It says, hey, John, who are you rooting for in the MLB playoffs? Chipper Jones threw out the first pitch yesterday, and the funny thing is that he caught a foul ball during the game. True story. I did not even hear about that. That is awesome, man. I don't really know who I'm rooting for. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like Tampa Bay has a really good shot. I think the Astros have a great shot as well, so... That's tough to say, man. Who, who are you guys rooting for? I'd like to hear from you guys as well. It's going to be very, very interesting, to say the least. Here's some older vintage. Really appreciate that Super Chat 357 Mag. I appreciate you being here, too. 
Here's a rookie card from 65 Tops. Dave Daly and Bob Tolan. And here's a nice one with Juan Marichal on it. So I missed it. Chuck Chicago says, Tampa Bay lost to the Astros today. Oh, geez. I didn't even hear about that. Juan Marichal and Bobby Kloss. Very cool stuff, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Like I said, I sent something out to you today. So I think you will enjoy it. Please check out Jennifer's channel. Give her a sub. Help her get over 100. She's really close to it. Yeah, I think I feel like the Astros are going all the way this year. Just my personal opinion. Austin says, Verlander allowed one hit over seven innings. Hey, Verlander's unstoppable. Walking USA Tour says, have you ever met any of the Ghostbusters actors? You know what I did? Last year, I met Dan Aykroyd. And I got a picture with him. He did an autograph signing at, um, what was it, Fine Wine and Good Spirits in Pittsburgh. So I stood in line for, I don't know, probably two and a half, three hours. My girlfriend and I both did just to meet him for, I don't know, 10 seconds. So it kind of sucked, but he autographed a poster that I have. Um, it's a big, huge print, actually, from the first movie, the rooftop scene, where they're all walking up together uh, to battle Gozer. And uh, he autographed that, and it was a real quick interaction. Very meaningless to him, I'm sure, because I'm just another face in the crowd, but still awesome to meet Dan Aykroyd. And then I wanted to meet Ernie Hudson. Um, he came to Steel City Con um, just this past April. I didn't end up going to it because... <laughs> I'd like to meet Ernie Hudson, but you, you, you end up paying like over a hundred bucks just to meet them for, I don't know, two minutes, get their autograph, get a picture real quick, and then you're just shuffled out of there. So I ended up bailing on it. I was like, I don't really want to pay a hundred bucks or over a hundred bucks just to meet Ernie Hudson. I mean, I would love to meet him, but uh, I'd rather just get a picture of them overall, honestly, and not have to pay that much money. But Mr. Super Chat here from... NCJ Sports Cards says, hey, good video of the 81 Fleer break. Hey, thank you very much, NCJ Sport Cards. Really appreciate that, man. It definitely was a very, very fun break. Please click on that super chat. Check them out. Give them a sub. They're putting a lot of videos out there. Thank you guys for letting me know about that. Sorry I missed it. I was rambling on about Ghostbusters. I'm going to talk about Ghostbusters forever. So, yeah, hopefully the poster that I have, I wanted to... Uh, Want to get autographed by all of them. Obviously, Harold Ramis is dead, so that wouldn't actually be plausible. But um, I'd like to get the other three. Bill Murray, obviously, would probably be impossible to get his autograph and meet him, unless you're paying like a thousand bucks. But it'd still be pretty sick. This is from Dominic Rocco in New York. It says, Keep the great videos. I sent you a couple of cards a few months ago, and I thank you for the comics you sent back. I was hoping that you, you could appreciate those and didn't have them already, so that's good that you liked them. I'm also a big New York Met fan, so if you have any game use or autos of better Met players, I would take one off your hands. Well, thank you very much for the support, Dominic. I definitely remember the cards you sent a few months ago. You sent some nice stuff. Um, yeah, I'll definitely check out and see what I have. I know you asked about a Mookie Wilson autograph a while back, but I have no idea where it's at. I have endless amounts of 5,000 count boxes that are full of stuff, but I could definitely check out and see what I have along the way of Mets autos. Um... Saying something back. Thank you guys for subbing to NCJ Sports Cards. So we have Anthony Rizzo, numbered card here, 132 out of 499. That's a nice one. And we have some non sports cards, a Frankenstein sketch card. Let me make sure this is. <laughs> Good thing I pulled it off camera because it is not appropriate. Ladies' leather and lace cards from 94. There was a uh, bare breast on there, so I'm not going to show that one on camera. Joseph C. says, Bill Murray crashes random house parties. I have heard that. So there is some naked chicks in here, so I'm not going to show them. Elvira. Any of Elvira fans? Some of these are, are not too bad. Here's two bucks from Autistic Family Collectibles. Says, I have a Bernard Gilkey auto. Best man ever. He's not lying. He definitely does have a Bernard Gilkey autograph that he could probably forward you, uh, Dominic Rocco. If you'd be interested, I don't know if I don't think I have any more Bernard Gilkey stuff, um, except for this one, which is slowly making its way down to Texas with Jonathan H. I think this is his last card ever, but uh, I mean that he means business on that one. Bernard Gilkey, a bad omen in the channel for quite some time now. But there's Elvira. I'm gonna go through the rest of these. I mean, they're 
Avira is not naked, so we can show these ones. Just make sure the ones behind her aren't, because the other ones were not appropriate. So, a bunch of Elvira cards for you Elvira fans. Austin Farmer says, I sent you a Topps Chrome Gilkey, Jono. I definitely remember that. <laughs> Chuck says, Revenge is best served ice cold. And Clayton says, Bill Murray is in Jacksonville, Florida all the time. That's pretty awesome. I didn't know that. So, an Elvira set here from 97, looks like. Interesting cards. I've never seen them. Elvira, a big icon of the 80s. A lot of different shots on here. Austin says I get eight plunks for one Gilkey. My Halloween wouldn't be complete without you. That sounds like it'd be like a Valentine's Day card. And there's one for Christmas. And it looks like we have another pack here. Brett G says Elvira is a real witch though. <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> that one's creepy. I've definitely seen some Elvira movies a long time ago. I'll make sure that uh, the rest of these are appropriate. Uh, I thought I might have saw a nip slip there, but maybe not. Austin Farmer says she's stunning. So a bunch of Elvira cards. Here's some animation. Going more inappropriate there, so I'm not gonna show all those. But thank you very much, Dominic Rocco. And we have some comics. We have Sectars. If you guys remember Sectars from the 80s. And the toy line. Very valuable stuff nowadays. Looks like we have a few in one, uh, one baggie here. I have not started going and uh, getting Sectar stuff yet. Pretty pricey. We have a few of them here. I want to say, uh, I forget who it was, sent me one of these a few months back. I can't, was it Jonathan H.? I can't remember. I know he sent me Centurion's uh, coloring book, but somebody sent me Sectar's uh, comic. I can't remember who it was, but very cool stuff there. And there's more behind that. And there's five bucks from our buddy Boom Slang. It says, hey, John, another great FMF. Always look forward to them. I'm at 684, and he's still pushing to 750. Any subs we appreciate. Elvira is hot if you like God. Thanks so much, Boom Slang. Really appreciate that, man. Let's please try and get him to at least 700 tonight, guys. Um, anybody that's not sub the Boom Slang, please check him out. He's always firing off new content, flea market videos, all kinds of stuff. The kind of stuff that you guys enjoy watching. So please check him out, give him a sub, help him get to his goal there, 750. And Boom Slang, I actually have something I'm packaging up for you to send out um, tomorrow or Monday. Um, so keep an eye out for that. For your FMF stuff last Friday. I got some more stuff sent out today to um, people from a while back. So keep an eye out for some stuff from me, guys. More sectars. I want to say this might have been one of the ones that somebody sent me. Very cool stuff. I don't have too many comics, but uh, these will fit right in my collection. Very, very awesome. Sectars. Great cartoon. Great toy line. Never saw the comics until recently, though. Never knew they existed. So I feel like that's how it is with everything. Every character in the 80s had basically made comics for. I found out years later. Thanks so much, Donna Rock. I'll check out and see what I have along the way of uh, Mets Autos and try to get something back out to you. Appreciate that, man. And we got some stuff here from our buddy Dream Big Productions. And says... From Dream Big Productions. Glad you enjoy the plush bats. Or plural. The white teddy bear and the Hello Kitty toy collectibles. Here's the first postcard we sent you for yours to keep. And it is of uh, the Golden Gate Bridge in San Fran. So thank you very much. A nice postcard. Appreciate that. I've actually been there. I was in San Francisco in 2010. And it was pretty awesome. It was definitely an interesting experience. It's like a different world out there compared to Pennsylvania. So very, very cool stuff. Dream Big, thank you very much. Dream Big actually just put a video up I saw recently of him running to a mailbox um, in the middle of the night, it looked like, to mail something. I'm not sure if that was my package or what it was, but uh, check out Dream Big Productions and give him a sub if you would. He is located in Arizona. 
He's got like uh, 1,600 subscribers, something like that. Let's see what we have in here. Looks like we have a dog tag and a key. So Dream Big sent us a postcard. Wait, there's a note in here too. We got a postcard from San Francisco. Couple notes, looks like they got, they're on sticky notes, they got stuck to the inside of the envelope. Let me pull these out and check out what Dream Big wrote. Okay, so there's just one in here, but it says, here's the dud key, number 107, along with a key ring tag for your collection. And signed Dream Big Productions. So we have a dud key here for number 107 and a dog tag key ring to go with it. Really cool stuff. Thanks a lot, Dream Big Productions. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate all your support and everything that uh, you've sent over the last few months, man. Very, very nice of you. Uh, next one we'll do for Carson Kane. Kane Bros. I have a feeling it's probably all troll stuff, more than likely. If it's inappropriate, we're not going to show it. <laughs> it's nice. It's a troll package, all right. It says Lenny the Three Amigos, or the Three Amigos, Lenny, Plunky, and Passy for Pascal Perez. Or Stooges. Good luck trolling us. We are not Cody Martin, who is cool. We are the Kane Boys, younger version of the Jazz Brothers. All in fun. Bring your bro to Colorado. Let's hit some fleas. I would definitely like to do that. Come out there. I've never been out to Colorado. I've been to California. That's as far west as I've been, but I was on a plane, so I didn't go through all the other states. Boob Slang says, John, you need to start hitting up local bus stations. That key may be to a locker full of plunks. <laughs> yeah, maybe that key... Uh that key will unlock something. Maybe that'll take me to a locker where all the remaining Honus Wagner T206 cards are or something in pristine Gemmin 10 condition. Autistic Family Collectible says, or missing person. There's a Dijkstra, Eric Plunk. Trying to look really cool. And there is the drug lord, Pascal Perez. Awesome pharmacists don't fall for the trap, John. <laughs> the good old cane boys. They are always trolling. Always trolling. We got an Ant Man tag here. That's pretty cool. Upper deck. That's kind of cool there. I never saw it before. Good old Ant Man. And we got some more here. We got Robbie, Chet, Lemon, Donnie, Passy. And as you see from the Kane boys again, Wrath of Kane and the bros. Chet Lemon, Dawn Money. There's Pascal Perez. There's old D Thon. Pascal Perez again, Chet Lemon, and Rob Deere, the big K on him. I used to hate Rob Deere. I don't know why. Never liked him. He seemed like he was a nice guy, but I just wasn't into him. I'm pretty sure Eric hated him too. Well, thank you, Wrath of Kane. The feeling's mutual, man. I appreciate your support. And it's always funny getting packages from you guys. Never know what's going to be in them. I mean, I kind of know what's going to be in them, but <laughs> it's always a nice surprise. So thanks. Next one is from our buddy, Ron Bywaters, a.k.a. Baltimore Box Breakers. Good friend of the channel. I think he's still in here. Not sure if there's too many people in here or not. I don't know what time Eric was going to live. Imagine probably nine o'clock. Looks like we have some supplies in here. Or as you guys may know, triple B's. Very cool. So some nice rookie card top loaders. I actually needed some more of these. I haven't seen them in a while. Very, very awesome triple B's. We got a bunch of stuff in here. Mystery bag. Looks like it could be a subset of some kind. So Eric's gonna allow 930. Okay, that makes sense. Whoa, looks like we have a PSA, Johnny Ray, Desert Shield card, maybe? I mean, it's got to be. I see 91 tops on the back. Wow. NCJ Sports card says me. I asked yourself a question. Yeah, feel free, man. Wrath of Kane says, we sent a card that will end all trolling. <laughs> 
I don't even know what I don't even want to know what that is. I don't think. There's a lot of stuff in here, Trill Bees, man. I really appreciate this. Very, very cool of you. Very eager to check this out. This is very awesome. 3,000 hits for Ripken Jr. Portrait here. And it's numbered 646 out of 5,000. Wow, that is freaking sweet, man. And there's Baltimore Box Breakers, Trill Bees, right there with a $3 super chat that says fist bump. How do you put those emojis on there? Those are really cool. <laughs> really appreciate that, man. Please check out Trill Bees. Give him a sub. He's always putting content out there. He's an awesome guy. And he is, last I looked, he was a little over 300 subs. So let's try to get him to 400 if we can. It's always uh, putting new content out there for you guys to watch. I'm always looking for new card channels to watch too, so I'm sure you guys are probably the same way. And whoa, this is sick. I did not have this. It's a game and four for Ghostbusters for the video game that actually just came out today. The re-release of Ghostbusters for PS4, or the, or the remaster for PS4 and Xbox One. I actually almost went to GameStop and bought it because um, I freaking love this game. It's one of my favorite games of all time. This is something I did not have that I've wanted for quite a while. I actually uh, used some of the uh, clip of this game in, in a FMF video with the mailman where I was sitting there playing it. But uh, if you are a gamer of any kind or have a PS4 and you're a Ghostbusters fan, check this game out because it is freaking sweet. And the graphics are awesome, even better now that it's remastered. So um, cannot wait to check this out. Uh, read over this article and go and make, you're making me want to go buy the game now. I kind of talked myself out of it today because I still have Red Dead Redemption 2 to play. I started playing it and then I just freaking quit i don't know why it was just like overwhelming there's so much stuff going on and red dead redemption one's like my favorite game of all time so um I need to get back into that before i start playing the remaster what's up hard r cards how you doing man thank you for uh stopping by very very cool drill bees i really appreciate that man that is that is so awesome but i got a little too excited there wow he's got a custom postcard here how cool was that that is freaking awesome. Wow, that is some professional stuff there. It says, hey, John, Ron in Baltimore, a.k.a. Baltimore Box Breakers here, was finally able to find a couple of items to add to a package for FMF, including a few supplies, some penny sleeves, and top loaders for that ever-growing rookie card collection. Just had my 250-sub giveaway, and we'll be giving away a PSA-graded 1972 Topps Frank Robinson card. That's pretty freaking awesome. Along with a prize package when I reach 500 subs. Thank you for all the support and entertainment you provide the card and collectible community, Ron in Baltimore. That's so awesome, man. I really appreciate that. And um, like I said, let's try to get him up to 400 tonight, guys. Last I looked, he was a little over 300. He's uh, going, going for his next goal of 500. So if you enjoy baseball cards, he even does football cards and stuff too. And if you thought the 81 Fleer break I did the other day was good, definitely check his out because his was even better, I think. Very, very cool. And there's five bucks and three five seven maggots. This is Mike Trout 2011 Tops update worth three dollars in Beckett in November 2011 and worth 12 bucks in July 2012. Unbelievable. That is pretty crazy, man. Thanks so much for that. Yeah, it's that, that is uh, hard to believe, man. Very, very nuts. Here's the Johnny Ray Desert Shield card. So cool. PSA eight. This is definitely one I did not have. And a nice one for the set. I'm trying to complete the whole set. I think I have a little over 300 of them now. And there's 792 cards in the set, I believe. So I am uh, getting there, getting towards halfway. But this is one I definitely needed. So super awesome. Thanks so much, man. PSA 8, too. Was that something you had in your own personal collection, or did you pick that up out somewhere? Baltimore Box Breakers with two boxes. says both those 81 Fleer boxes were great. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate all your support. Yours is yours is awesome though, because the centering on all your cards was like pristine, man, compared to the ones that I pulled. I actually was like concerned my own box would be searched because it was tampered with. There's like nine packs on the top left and bottom left, and then eight packs on the top and bottom right, and then the the bonus packs were missing. Some of the packs just like f unfolded real easily. And here's top run makers. A uh, subset I've never even heard of from the late 80s, I'm going to say. I've never seen these, so let's open them up and check them out. Looks like these have never even been opened. 
Hey, Brendan Simmons. Definitely a set that I've never seen before. These are pretty cool. 87. So it's going to be loaded full of stars and now Hall of Famers. And some guys have fizzled out as well. But there's some good names in here, though. There's a Ripken, Donnie Baseball. It's, like, identical to his rookie card, 81 tops. Like, the same exact picture almost. That's pretty crazy. Boggs, Dawson, Murray. Lots of big names in here. Never heard of these, never seen them before. Very unique unique set here. Drill Bs. I love stuff like this. I have a bunch of different, different uh, subsets like this. Top run makers. That's really cool, man. Really appreciate that. Yeah, I like the Woolworth stuff, the Hills, the Ames, all those like special sets they made. I have so many of them now, though. Probably have duplicates of a bunch. Ripken Ripken says, what year is that set? This is from 87. There's a checklist on the back, but I want to check out the cards. I guess it says on the side there. 87, so very, very cool. Can Seiko or Bonds didn't make their way in there or anything yet. Just came on the scene. And like I said, two rookie card top loaders. Those are awesome. I'm always looking to buy more of those. And I've got some packs in here. Looks like 94 tops, I'm going to say. It is Series 1. There's a Jose Lean rookie card. And Turtles, some TMNT cards from 1990 probably, 1989. And, and a different Series Turtle. Very, very cool. This is pretty awesome. He's got a Twitter as well. Be more box breaks. There's some high class stuff here, Troll Bees. I like this a lot. That logo is freaking awesome too. Very, very cool. And some penny sleeves, cardboard gold penny sleeves. Can never have too many of those. Very, very awesome. And a clamshell case here with my old favorite player on the top, Jose Leaned. This card actually had some value to it. Um, a long time ago. <laughs> Very long time ago, I think it. Book value was around two bucks. I say book value because I used to be obsessed with Beckett and looking up prices when I was a little kid. And that's all I did, eat cereal and look up prices. Brendan Simmons says, how are you planning on celebrating 5K? You know, I've been thinking about that lately. I don't know if I'm going to break something, rip a box, a personal break. What I'm going to do, I, I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna give away stuff throughout the entire video. So that's coming up uh, pretty soon, actually. But the way I'm going to do it, so anybody that's in here tonight, I'll let you in on a secret that I haven't told anybody else. But I'm going to uh, give different things away, like singles. I might give, like, sets away, um, all kinds of random stuff. So how I'm going to do it, it's not going to be Kahoot. We're not, we're not doing that anymore. I'm just going to go on to a random comment generator. So if you comment on my videos at all, like I'm just going to pick random videos and we're just going to generate random comments. And if you pop up, then you win whatever it is. I feel like it's fair that way. There's no Kahoot. There's no questions. So if you're like a, I don't know, if, you, if you're a supporter of the channel, you comment on videos and whatnot and watch things, um, add your two cents to the videos, then uh, you have a chance to win a bunch of different stuff. So that is... <laughs> Brendan Simmons says, I'd love a nice luggage tag. Well, I might be able to help you out with that, man. I, I, I don't see why not. There's two bucks again from Trill Bees. It says, need to use that art degree to design something. <laughs> well, that's pretty awesome, man. That is very, very nice. I like those a lot. Very, very cool stuff. Thank you very much for that. There's a lean rookie card. Chris Sabo. So we got some troll cards here, possibly. Another Sabo. That's the second one tonight. If only we were part of the Jonathan H. Um, and Friends challenge, we'd be winning right now. I think Brendan Simmons is winning right that, or, or winning or ahead of that one. I think he pulled one Sable out of Fairfield box. If you guys aren't familiar with that, check out uh, Autistic Family Collectibles, Brendan Simmons. Um, I'm not sure who else is involved in that, but they're doing a thing for charity where you, what is it? Uh, it's one day of the week, or you buy a Fairfield box and you rip it. If you find a Sabo, you get one point. So, Brendan Simmons is actually leading right now because he picked a Fairfield box that had 90 Don Russ in it purposely just to find a Sabo, and he found a freaking Sabo. So, but it only counts in Fairfield, like Ripping for Ripping said. Hey, Kirk is a Klingon. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. 
<laughs> Joseph C says, glad to see Jose Lean is wearing pants in all his cards. And Michael Padgett's in on it, too, because he didn't find a Sabo. Hello, Thomas Poor. There is Dan Quisenberry, another bad one in the channel, but he was a good closer. Lean to up, or Ultra from 91. Eric Plunk looking disheveled, as always. There's a Lean again. Another dirty-looking Plunk card. I just feel dirty looking at that card. I don't know why. It's just something about it. It really rubs me the wrong way. Lean Ultra again. Another Plunk. Another leaned. A different Sabo from 91, Don Ross, Russ, with the Rex Specs. Shining through, and there's that Jose Lean to read rookie card again. I, I love that card when I was a little kid. That's probably my favorite card, like back in like 1990, was that Lean 88 Don Russ. Now I probably have like 200 of it, but we might as well rip some packs. Sure thing, Thomas Poor, ask away. Let's uh, rip some of these packs open. 94 tops. Um, I want to say the best card you can pull out of here is probably Mike Piazza in series one. Billy Wagner is the best rookie, he's in series two though. But I want to say Piazza is the very first card of the set. Or you can pull Tops Gold. There's one per pack. I see Manny Ramirez in the back, so that's not a bad one at all. There's five bucks from Autistic Family Collectibles. It's Walgreens Wednesdays. Rip Fairfield one month every Wednesday. And whoever pulls the most Sabos gets to choose a charity, and we all donate five bucks. So there you go. There is the um, official um, rules and info from Autistic Family Collectibles. Please check him out and all the um, the channels that are involved in that. It's a very, very cool thing they're doing. Walgreens Wednesdays and then donating the money to charity afterwards. Very, very awesome stuff. A charity of the winner's choice. And Joseph C. with two bucks. It says, Eric Plunk, is that dirt or a mustache on his face? A little dirty Sanchez. Thank you very much, Joseph C. Really appreciate that. And our gold card is Lee Smith. So, not a bad one. Lee Smith's cards never had value to him, but he's still in the Hall of Fame anyway, so still pretty cool nonetheless. These ones are stuck together, a little paper loss on Lee Smith. Eric and I used to buy tons of these cards. These Future Star cards were a hot thing back then. There's a Manny. Two Manny Ramirez cards, so not, not bad. Not a Hall of Famer, but still, I was always a Manny fan. Got two of his rookies sent in by Jennifer Zimmerman tonight. It was a nice surprise. And there's five bucks from Baltimore Box Breaker. Says wanted to cleanse the palette with lean before and after each draw card. LOL. Thank you very much, man. I totally, totally get it. Especially after that dirty 88 tops plunk. I feel like all of us need to go take an immediate shower after looking at that card. It just, it is, uh, I don't know. It makes me sick to my stomach almost. I don't know why. Just an utter hatred for Eric Plunk since I was a little kid for no reason at all. <laughs> like Eric always says, there's two bucks from Austin Farmer. It says, Plunk's face triggers my depression. I can definitely relate to that. Kevin Brown, I can't tell if he's falling backwards or if he's just about to throw. Jose Mesa looking real cool. Pete Gavilia. I always had a ton of these cards when I was younger. Like I said, these were like a buck 29 back in 94. So we used to buy them all the time. Tim Scott, Nigel Wilson, the huge back-to-back -back Nigel Wilsons. What's up with that Future Stars card? The huge rookie bust that I invested all my effort and money into collecting. Like some of you guys may have done as well before you got shipped off to Japan. But huge rookie bust, the Marlins. There is 93 per deck rookie cards like crazy hyped. It's a big Mac card. It's a nice one. Walt Weiss. And, I mean, these are stuck together, and you can't open a pack of 90s cards without finding our favorite omen. It's a Topps Gold to Greg Swindell on his Astros uniform. <laughs> if Paul L was here, I'm sure he'd love that. Neon Dion. Sliding the second base. Otis Nixon, and I don't know what's up with these packs, having two of, this, two of the same last card. It's too bad I couldn't have been a Jeter. I don't even know if Jeter was in this set. I thought Jeter had a Future Stars card in this set, but I could be wrong. I haven't, if, if he did, I haven't seen it in a long time, so I forget about it. we got three packs of TMNT. I'm going to save these, actually. I, I want to say somebody sent me like, the entire set of these, so I'm going to keep these safekeeping for now. Very, very cool stuff, though. Triple Bs. I really appreciate that, man. Please 
check out his channel and his Twitter as well if you're on Twitter. I don't mess with Twitter. I never really have, so I don't know anything about it. But be more box breaks on Twitter and Baltimore box breakers on YouTube. All you gotta do is type in the search bar or click on the super chats and go to his channel and help him grow his channel. He's always putting videos out there and he's an awesome dude as well. So really appreciate all the cool stuff. That set was awesome. Everything was awesome. Desert Shield card didn't have. This is sick. Some nice weekend reading material there. And you could always use supplies. And Joseph C. says, Rookie Bus, let me tell you about Greg Jeffries. If I were to focus on Griffey then and not Jeffries, I'd be a millionaire right now. Yeah, Greg Jeffries. See, a lot of people get really angry whenever you say Greg Jeffries was a rookie bust because, what, he was in the 94 All-Star game. So people come out swinging whenever you bring, in, bring Greg Jeffries into the mix on rookie bust. I know Eric knows all about that. And also this really sick numbered Ripken 3,000 hits um, portrait here. Very, very cool. 646 out of 5,000. I'm surprised that you gave that one up, Drill Bees. Judging by how you're a huge Baltimore fan, but thank you very much. I'll definitely find a nice some of my collection. <laughs> Drill Bees says, I don't mess with Twitter either. <laughs> yeah, I don't, know, I don't know much about it. The next one is from our buddy Corey J, who is in here, Ripping for Ripkins. Like I said, I just started a channel recently and he is at 50 subs i think now autistic family festival said um so please check him out put two videos out today and he's got plenty more on the way so if you like watching old packs get ripped open then definitely check him out before i almost stab myself And so Corey J, Ripping for Ripkins. I have a note here. It says, there we go, Ripping for Ripkins on YouTube. It says, hey, John, just a couple of different items for you or one of your loyal subs. I don't need anything back, but I enclose an envelope with my address on it. You can use it for one of my future purchases. I'm, not, I'm sending this in two days after the 81 Don Rust break. My subs doubled since that day, and at the time of this letter, I'm at 31 subs. Well, that's pretty awesome. You're like 20 more now. Um, I'm buying 1990 boxes of Bowman, Upper Deck, Fleer, Score, Don Ross, Tops, and Leaf. I'm picking back up where I left off in 89 when I stopped collecting. Once I work out the tripod issues, I'll begin this journey. I hope by the time you open this, I have my first video posted, and you do. You have several already. I appreciate all your help and suggestions with my channel. The two PSA 10 Ripkins I picked up when I started back in July, but since they don't have the PSA stick in the middle, I picked up ones that did. I know you don't collect many slabs, but you know someone that will enjoy these. Thanks for keeping the past alive. Corey J. Ripping for Ripkins. Thanks so much, man. I really appreciate the kind words and your support overall. And definitely looking forward to watching you grow your channel, man. We have his address in here, so we got that. I'm not going to show that on camera. And it looks like we might have some... This is pretty awesome. McFarlane Sports Picks figures. We got Pudge Rodriguez and Mark Pryor. Somebody, I forget who it was, actually sent me the Barry Zito and, Je Barry Zito and Jeter recently. So now I have a nice little collection of these. Very, very cool. Um, I don't remember these are ever even coming out. These are relatively new to me. But McFarlane, McFarlane Toys made these, so that's interesting. McFarlane made Spawn figures, lots of other stuff. They made the, the Stranger Things toy line that came out recently. 2004 is when these came out. Chet Lemons says, Mark Pryor was such a massive prospect. And Pudge is a proper Rodriguez, Austin Farmer says. Pudge in his Marlins uniform. I'll never, I don't think I'll ever get used to that. These are really, really cool, though. I like those a lot. Thank you very much. Ripping for Ripkins. Very cool to add this collection there. And let's see. We have something in this bubble wrap there. I see the Ripken PSA card. We have a bunch of these figures, actually. Starting lineup. Nice. Ichiro, Tommy, Alfonso, Soriano, Randy Johnson, and Jason Kendall starting lineup. I didn't even know they made one for him. We were, Eric and I were big Kendall fans back in the 90s. Huge Kendall fans, actually. This is pretty awesome. 1997. Never seen this one. I come across starting lineups quite frequently, too. 
So that is pretty sweet. Very, very cool. Thanks so much, man. Jason Kendall starting lineup. I like that one a lot. Very, very cool stuff. I think I have like a, a dozen starting lineups now. And the Alfonso Soriano, Randy Johnson. McFarlane Sports Picks. These are from 2004. And Ichiro, soon to be in the hall in a few years. And Jim Tomei is already in the hall in his Phillies attire. I'll still never get used to Tomei in a Phillies attire either. Just not how I grew up knowing him. Know him as a Indian for life. But that's because I stopped following <laughs> some baseball a long time ago. So... Very, very awesome stuff for those. And there is 10 bucks from Polly Junkwax. It says, got home from work today and saw a vid comment from one of the reasons I got back into cards. Yes, you, John. Hello to you in Britain, Austin, Autistic, and the rest of you amazing guys, too. Much love. Thanks so much, Polly Junkwax. I really appreciate that, man. Please check out his channel. I just watched his most recent video. It is mail video where he gets a pretty awesome numbered card. That um, pretty hot player right now. So head over to his channel. Check that out when you get a chance. Give him a sub too. Help him grow his channel. Just got back into collecting cards not too long ago. He's putting a bunch of videos out there. Awesome guy all around. Really appreciate your support, Polly. Hope to see more videos from you. And here's the PSA cards that uh, Corey was talking about. 97 Donruss update. A Gem Mint 10. A card I've never seen before either. I stopped collecting 97, so... I don't even know if I really had any 97 cards, honestly. I might, have, I, might, I might have bought a few packs of tops, and that was probably about it before I left the hobby altogether. Poly Junk Wax has more videos coming soon, guys. Definitely looking forward to it, man. Please give him a sub if you would. Everyone sub each other. Grow your channels. Grow the community. Plug my phone in there. Sorry about that. But here is the Ripken Donruss Update card. With the uh, gold facsimile auto on there. And this numbered 1790 out of 5,000. And 8 of 10 out of the set. That's a pretty awesome card. Never seen it before. Like that one a lot, Corey. And an 84 Don Russ Gem Mint 10 Ripken. That is a nice card. I'd never owned this one before either. I always liked it. I want to say Eric owned this whenever we were younger and I was real jealous of him because of it. But uh, it looks like a perfect card to me. Gem Mint 10. The center looks uh, pretty amazing on it. Corners are sharp. Very nice. That's actually third year Ripken card. Very, very nice. like that one a lot. Thanks so much, Corey. I really appreciate that, man. I'm glad you're back into the hobby now and collecting again. And glad you're making videos, too, overall. That's, that's sick, man. I love seeing that and hearing about it. So um, please check him out. Give him a sub. Head over to his channel. Check out his new videos. And, uh... Welcome him to the community overall. Ripping for Ripkins. And there's two boxes from Mess of Things. Says, Love cards that aren't typical artwork. Nice. Thanks so much, Mess of Things. I can definitely agree with you on that. That was a very, very nice package, Corey. Did not expect that at all, man. And we have one more left. From Joseph Baumgarten. I don't know if Joe is in here right now. A.K.A. Joe Yankee. 84 Don Russ is an amazing set. I love it. I'd love to uh, rip a box of those, but they're like 500 bucks now for for a BBC one. I don't, I don't really go after BBC boxes anymore, though, because I've seen that pretty good luck buying ones that aren't authenticated. Thanks so much, Ben B. I appreciate that, man. Rip it up in one more package here. This is the last one for the night, and I will let you guys get back to doing whatever you're doing and enjoying your Friday night. Um, and Eric will be... Screaming at 9.30 tonight, I guess. We have a note in here from Joseph B., our good buddy. I'm not sure what's in here. Could be a bunch of plunks. He is here. Sorry, I didn't see you. Anybody that uh, tries to get my attention in the chat, if I don't say anything, respond to you. I'm not ignoring you. I just I, don't, um, I missed it. So, he says, watching the Yanks, they are tied three for three. And here is a note from Joe. John, the channel that breaks the videos all continue to be amazing. You have a loyal legion of passes of live fans. I hope the Desert Shield break does happen, along with other cool older sets. Since it's Halloween, are you a fan of the Freddy, Chucky, Jason, Stephen King films? It's part, 
It Parts 1 and 2 were incredible. If you haven't seen The Shining, check that out too. Definitely love The Shining. Definitely love Stephen King movies. Um, Langoliers, Rose Red. Actually, always, I joke around with my girlfriend, Brittany, all the time. Sometimes she'll come to my house like real late, like 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, all right, I want to watch a Stephen King movie because <laughs> they're four hours long. She gets all pissed off at me. It's like kind of something that I say to her like every single night now. Because she usually ends up coming over later. And um, that's like the first thing I say. Like, you ready to watch a Stephen King movie? I saw I saw the original It. I saw the remake of It. I did not see part two yet. But I do like... I like horror movies, but I like more so uh, like supernatural thrillers like Conjuring. I didn't really care for the second one. But uh, stuff like that, uh, I'm a big fan of. Even... Uh, Sinister was pretty creepy. I thought that was a, a good movie, a good plot overall. I don't know if they... I, I think they made a Sinister too. I can't remember. Paul John Wax is that so romantic, Sean. <laughs> yep. So watch Stephen King, Rose Red at 11 o'clock because I'm, I'm the kind of guy who likes to stay up till like 2 a.m. even though I have to work the next morning and like she does too. So she's like ready to pass out like 10.30. So like I give her a hard time about it. Like, come on. Like I'm trying to stay up till like 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. And then she goes to bed, and then uh, I sit around and look at baseball cards and toys. <laughs> if you have any awesome pre-1975 cards that include the awesome packs you always send in your FMF response, that would be incredible. I can definitely do that for you, man. If that Sabo FMF letter from last week is real, I'll chip in towards his $2,000 appearance fee, but I'm definitely making fun of his glasses in the chat. See you in the live stream, Joe. <laughs> Thanks a lot for that, man. No, I don't think that uh, that Sabo representative was real. I'm pretty sure that was the Kane brothers that sent that. Somehow, I don't know if they had a friend send it to me because it was from a Philadelphia address and they live in Colorado, but still very, very hilarious. And there's two bucks again from a mess of things. says, did you know Shawshank Redemption is King 2? I did know that. I actually love that movie. Brittany never saw that until, I don't know, what is it, a year ago or something like that? I made her watch it. She was all about it. Yeah, I've, I've seen that movie so many times. Definitely a classic. Yeah, what, uh, Stephen King, uh, Storm of the Century. I have a few of his movies. I haven't watched them in a long time, though. The Shining is definitely a classic. I'll have to watch that again soon. I remember watching that when I was a kid and was so creeped out by it. Especially, like, the part where he goes and that chick's in the bathtub. Her skin starts flaking off. Super creepy. And the twins, everything about that is just creepy. Ben B says, Shawshank was filling my hometown. That's pretty freaking awesome. There's two bucks from Premont. Thanks so much, Premont. I really appreciate that, man. Didn't see you pop in here. And please check out Premont's channel. He's grown quickly, putting tons of videos out there for you. He's a really cool guy as well. You like baseball cards, you like his channel. And there's Autistic Family Collectibles. It says, what it, was it PA postmark or just a PA address? It was, uh, it was a PA address. Yeah, Primon definitely is the man, Wrath of Cain, no doubt about it. So Joseph sent some cards over here, and I see a Greg Swindell Raid rookie card. Randy says, Shawshank Redemption, my fave. Ripping for Ripkins with two bucks. It says, 55 subs now, great community, 1990 upper deck tomorrow. Thank you so much, Ripping for Ripkins, and thank you guys for subbing to him. Let's try and help get him to 100 sometime soon. Um, 90 upper deck could, <coughs> could house a possible... Reggie Jackson autograph. So maybe he'll pull one tomorrow. I think there was only a couple thousand that were put into production, but uh, who knows how many are still out there in boxes waiting to be uncovered, you know? So I'll be looking forward to that one, Ruby Verbkins. Can't wait for you to post it. Be interesting. 90 Upper Deck. You can also find the Ben McDonald Error card, which is a big craze back in the early 90s. His regular rookie card was too, with the Error card. Still has some value to it. And Ripping, Ripping, Ripping for Ripken says 2,500 Reggie Jackson autos were produced. So I wonder how many are still out there in packs waiting to be unveiled. There's a Juan Gonzalez patch relic. That is pretty sick. I grew up watching Juan Gonzalez and was definitely a huge fan of him. So really nice guy too in real life. Very, very cool. It's actually a bat relic. I like that one a lot. There's two bucks from Autistic Family Collectibles. It says, did you just take a big gulp from a Taco Bell cup? <laughs> you know me too well, man. She wasn't a Taco Bell cup. It was a Burger King cup. Had to go buy an Impossible Whopper before I came to eat. 
or before I came for the live stream was because I didn't feel like making any food. I get tired of all the stuff that I buy at my house, so I like end up eating Pizza Hut and stuff all the time. Which is probably why I'm turning into a fat slob, but oh well. That is a different story. Rather, Kane says, get yourself some Surge from Burger King. Are they still producing Surge? I remember when they made a comeback a couple years ago. Yeah, Jonathan Hall knows me, <laughs> knows me way too well. It's hilarious. Stephen Moyle autograph. That's actually his rookie card, too. Don Russ cards I've never seen before. Signature series from 2015. These are really nice. And Junior Lake. Hopefully I pronounced it right. That's actually 1 out of 10. That's pretty sick. Very cool. I don't know if this, I don't think this one was numbered. Joseph C says you should have done Taco Bell. It's National Taco Day. Yeah, I've eaten Taco Bell for like the like last five or six days in a row, which is pretty common for me. I think the, I think the, my record for consecutive Taco Bell days is like I don't know, like thirty three days in a row or something like that. Something hideous and probably have clogged arteries and high blood pressure now because of it. Strictly because of that streak that I had, but I don't know. It's probably probably some kind of record. I would think so. Maybe not. Yeah, I get, I get kind of tired of eating Taco Bell all the time, so I had to switch it up a little bit today. But that's a nice one. One out of ten. A Jersey Kings from Brad Ziegler. Patch Relic. Also from 2015, Panini Don Russ. Another nice one. All cards that I've really never seen before. Dodger Old School says five to six days in a row, your colon must be made of steel. I think it's definitely conditioned after all the years of eating Taco Bell repeatedly. <laughs> 33 days in a row. Good God, man. Yeah, it's pretty bad, man. So that's why, now you know why I didn't go to Taco Bell tonight. Could not bring myself to do it. A Yonder Alonzo patch relic. Miami All-Star game. 7 out of 50. That is a nice one. Chuck Chicago says that Taco Bell cheese stains on your shirt at the Honey Hole were priceless. That's definitely what it was. I got a cheesy bean and rice burrito. And I've been into it and just splurted out all over my shirt. And I was like, oh, that's sweet. I'm sure Eric will definitely make sure he zooms in on that and shows it off in the video. And sure enough, he definitely did. My big brother. That's what they do. <laughs> I knew he would highlight that cheese stain. And people would get a kick out of it. So that's pretty funny. <laughs> DC fan Chris says, sounds like you probably destroyed some toilets over the years. I actually, uh, I don't have any stomach problems or anything else. I have, everything is completely normal. You'd think that it would be different eating Taco Bell all the time, but it is, uh, everything is normal as it should be. Yonder Alonzo Patch, or like Jason Hayward, press proof. Sometimes these are numbered. And his baseball collector says, Hey, John, I know it's been a while, but it was nice meeting you at the National. Hey, thanks a lot, baseball collector. Really appreciate that. Nice meeting you as well, man. 118 out of 191, Matt Harvey. Carlos Correa, 197 out of 299. Troy Tolowitzki, also numbered 243 out of 999. Nice one there. And David Ortiz, 90 out of 99. She still need to get my hands on this rookie card. Uh, camp short, can't really find it for a decent price these days, but that's to be expected. Kenny's Vargas, two seventy seven on nine ninety nine, and uh, Adrian Beltry. That's pretty awesome. I actually picked up his rookie card, ninety seven Bowman Chrome, at a flea market for like a buck recently. It was uh, an amazing deal. Uh, this is three twenty seven on a four ninety two, and of course there's D Thon. <laughs> Several troll cards. There's that hideous Eric Plunk, 88 tops again, 89 Don Russ, and Greg Swindell, rookie card, 87 Don Russ, looking a lot more happy than he should be. Some nice cards in there, though, overall. I really appreciate that, Joseph. Um, very cool of you. And another relic here from Trot Nixon, definitely another name that I grew up with. His uh, rookie card year is 94. Game used uh, patch relic there. It's pretty awesome. I like that one a lot, Trot Nixon. Solid ball player overall, too. And wouldn't you know it, Charlie Huff, <laughs> Toff's Archive Signature Series autograph, 40, or 48 out of 99. That, that is incredible. I've gotten some pretty crazy autographs from people over the last few months. Chris Sabo, Greg Swindell, et cetera, et cetera. Charlie Huff, <laughs> this is actually pretty awesome. Charlie Huff looking uh, somewhat still young in this 81 Toff's card. 
he still has some youth to him there somehow. I don't know how, but uh, very nice card overall. And cannot believe that's an actual autograph from Charlie Huff. It's not written in uh, some sort of ancient sandstone from the prehistoric days. So that is it for FMF. Pretty awesome overall. I really appreciate you guys uh, being here and sending stuff in. And um, like I said, I have packages on their way to you today, tomorrow, and then uh, some more next week too. So thanks again for being here. I hope you guys all have a great weekend, and I will see you on Sunday for the weekend recap. See you later, guys.